lost something. It's really wonderful, Dr. Harper. In only two short years, you've taken on the spirit of Brooklyn. <laughs> That's very gratifying, Miss Bruce. You see, living here next to the church all our lives, we've seen so many ministers come and go. <laughs> With the spirit of Brooklyn, we always say it's friendliness, and your sermons are not so much sermons as friendly talks. Personally, I've always enjoyed my talks with Cardinal Gibbons. <laughs> or have I met him yet? No, dear, not yet. Are the biscuits good? Bullet! Won't you have another biscuit, Dr. Harper? Oh, oh, no. I'm afraid I'll have no appetite for dinner now. I always eat too many of your biscuits just to taste that lovely jam. You haven't tried the quince. We put a little apple in with it to take the tartness off. No, thank you. Well, you must have it, John. Oh, no, 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 no. You keep it here uh, so I can be sure of having your biscuits with it. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do hope they don't make us use that imitation flower again. I mean with this war trouble. <laughs> It may not be very charitable of me, but I have almost come to the conclusion that this Mr. Hitler is not a Christian. <laughs> oh, if only Europe were on another planet. Europe, sir? Uh, yes, Teddy. Point your gun the other way, hey, gun. Teddy, to the uh, west. There's your danger. There's your enemy, Japan. Why, yes, uh, yes, of course. Teddy. No, Aunt Abby, not so much talk about Europe and more about the canal. Well, let's not talk about war. Would you like another? No, thank you, Aunt Abby. Dr. Hart. Oh, no, uh, thank you. I must admit, Miss Abby, that uh, war and violence seem far removed from these surroundings. Oh, it is peaceful here, isn't it? Yes, peaceful. The virtues of another day. They're all here in this house. <laughs> the gentle virtues that went out with their candlelight and good manners and low taxes. <laughs> It's one of the oldest houses in Brooklyn, and it's just as it was when Grandfather Brewster built and furnished it, except for the electricity, and we use that as little as possible. It was Mortimer who persuaded us to put it in. Yes, I can understand that. Your nephew Mortimer seems to live only by electric light. Well, he has to work so late, the poor boy. I understand he's taking a lane to the theater with him again tonight. Daddy, your brother Mortimer will be here a little later. Delighted! <laughs> We're so glad it's delayed. Mortimer takes to the theater with well, him. Well, it's... Uh... A new experience for me to wait up until three o'clock in the morning for my daughter to be brought home. Dr. Harper, I hope you don't disapprove of Mortimer. Well. Oh, we'd feel so guilty if you did. My sister and I, I mean, since it was in our house that your daughter met Mortimer. Oh, of course, Miss Abby. And so I'll say immediately that I believe Mortimer himself to be quite a worthy gentleman. But I must also admit that I have watched the growing intimacy between him and my daughter with some trepidation for one reason, Miss Abby. You mean his stomach? His stomach? His dyspepsia. He's bothered with it so, poor boy. Uh, no, Miss Abby, I'll be frank with you. I'm speaking of your nephew's unfortunate connection with the theater. The theater? Oh, no, Dr. Harper. Mortimer writes for a New York newspaper. I know, Miss Abby, I know. But a dramatic critic is constantly exposed to the theater, and I don't doubt but what some of them do develop an interest in it. <laughs> oh, 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 not Mortimer. You need have no fear of that. <laughs> Why, Mortimer hates the theater. Really? Oh, yes. Writes awful things about the theater. <laughs> and you can't blame him, the poor boy. He was so happy writing about real estate, which he really knew something about. But then they just made him take this terrible nice position. My, my. Uh, but as Mortimer says, the theater can't last much longer anyway. <laughs> and in the meantime, it's a living. Yes. I think if we give the theater another year or two, perhaps. Well, now, who do you suppose that is? No, thank you, Debbie. I don't know. Hello, Miss Brewster. Hey, how are you, Mr. Brewster? Very well, Miss Brewster. What 
news have you brought me? Colonel, we have nothing to report. Splendid. Thank you, gentlemen. At ease. You know, Dr. Hoffman. Sure. Hello, Dr. Hoffman. We come for the toys for the Christmas fun. Oh, yes? That's splendid work you men do, fixing up discarded toys to give poor children a happier Christmas. Well, it gives us something to do when we have to sit around the station. You get tired of playing cards, and then you start cleaning your gun, and the first thing you know, you shot yourself in the foot. <laughs> Go upstairs and get that big box from your Aunt Martha's room. How is Mrs. Brophy today? Mrs. Brophy has been quite ill, Dr. Harper. Pneumonia. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Jack! She's better now. A little weak still. I'm going to get you some beef broth to take to her. Oh, don't bother, Miss Abby. You've done so much for her already. Well, she made it this morning, Sister Martha's taking some to poor Mr. Vinitsky right now. Sure. I'll only be a minute. Sit down, be comfortable. All of you. She shouldn't go to all that trouble. Listen, you try to stop her or her sister from doing something nice and for nothing. They don't even care how you vote. <laughs> when I received my call from Brooklyn and moved next door, my wife wasn't well when she died and for months before. Well, if I know what pure kindness and absolute generosity are, it's because I've known the Brewster sisters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But I have to call a cabinet meeting to get the release of those supplies. <laughs> he used to do that in the middle of the night. Today, his race came with us. They were a little afraid of him anyway. Oh, he's quite harmless. Suppose he does think he's Teddy Roosevelt. There's a lot of wise people he could think he was. It's a damn shame. A nice family like this, hatching a cuckoo. <laughs> but his father, the old girl's brother, was some sort of a genius, wasn't he? And their father, Teddy's grandfather, seems to me I heard he was a little bit crazy, too. Yeah, he was crazy like a fox. He made a million dollars. Really? Here in Brooklyn? Patent medicine. He was a kind of quack of some sort. Old Sergeant Edwards remembers him. He used the house here as a sort of clinic. He tried him out on people. I hear he used to make mistakes occasionally, too. Yeah, the department never bothered him much, because he's pretty useful on autopsies sometimes, especially the poison cases. Well, whatever he did, he left his daughters fixed for life. Thank God for that. Not that they ever spend any of it on himself. Yes, I'm well acquainted with their charity. Oh, you don't know the tender. When I was with the Missing Persons Bureau, I was trying to trace an old man. that we never did find. Do you know if there's a renting office that's got this house down on its list of furnished rooms? Now, they don't rent rooms. But you can be sure that anybody who comes here looking for a room goes away with a good meal. And probably a few dollars in their kit. Just their way of digging up people to do some good to. <laughs> well, isn't this nice? Have to know this. Have to know this. We just dropped by for the Christmas toys. Oh, yes. Teddy's Army and Navy. They wear out. They're all packed. Oh, the Colonel's upstairs after him. Seems the cabinet has to okay it. Yeah, of course. Oh, I hope Mrs. Brophy is better. Oh, she's doing fine, ma'am. Your sister is getting some soup for me to take to her. Oh, yes. We made it this morning. I just took some to a poor man who broke ever so many bones. Oh, you're back, Martha. How is Mr. Benitsky? Well, dear, it's pretty serious, I'm afraid. The doctor was there. He's going to amputate in the morning. Can we be present? No. <laughs> I asked him, but he said it was against the rules of the hospital. You couldn't be of any service, and you must spare yourself something. Oh, here's the broth, Mr. Brophy. Be sure it couldn't happen. Have... Yes, ma'am. Hey, this is great. This will make a lot of kids happy. That O'Malley boy is nuts about soldiers. That's General Miles. I've retired him. What's this? The Oregon. Oh, now, Teddy, dear, put it back. But the Oregon goes to Australia. Now, Teddy... No, I've given my word to fighting Bob Evans. Uh, but, Teddy... Now, what's the difference? What kid gets it? Bobby Evans, Izzy Cohen. Well, we'll be running along, ladies. And thank you very much. <laughs> Goodbye. I must be getting home. Oh, Dr. Harper, before you go. Charge! Charge the blockhouse. Uh, the uh, blockhouse? The stairs are always San Juan Hill. Uh, 
Have you ever tried to persuade him that he wasn't Teddy Roosevelt? Oh, no. He's so happy being Teddy Roosevelt. <laughs> Once, a long time ago, remember, Martha? We thought if he would be George Washington, it might be a change for him. But he stayed under his bed for days and just wouldn't be anybody. And we'd so much rather he was Mr. Roosevelt than nobody. Well, as long as he's happy. And what's more important, you're happy. And uh, now, uh, don't forget to have him sign me. Now, what are they? Dr. Harper has made all the arrangements for Teddy to go to Happy Dale Sanitarium after we pass on. But why should Teddy sign any papers now? It's best to have it all settled. If the Lord should take you away suddenly, we might not be able to persuade Teddy to commit himself. And, and that would mean an unpleasant legal procedure. Uh, Mr. Witherspoon understands that they are to be filed away until the time comes to use them. Now, Mr. Witherspoon, who is he? He's the superintendent of Happy Day. Dr. Harper has arranged for him to drop in tomorrow or next day to meet him. I'd better be running along, or Elaine will be over here looking Ooh, for me. I love you, Elaine, and Dr. Harper. And please, don't think harshly of Mortimer because he's a dramatic critic. Somebody has to do those things. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just have tea? Isn't it rather late? Yes. And dinner is going to be late too. So <laughs> no, why? Teddy! Teddy! Good news for you! You're going to Panama to dig another lock for the canal. Do you like it? That bullet! Just bullet! I shall prepare at once for the journey. Oh. <laughs> Yes, that's exactly what you'd 
say. Where are you going to go for dinner? I don't care. I'm not very hungry. Well, I just had breakfast. Suppose we wait till after the show. Well, oh, that'll make it pretty late, won't it? Not with the little stinker we're seeing tonight. Oh, the more I've heard about it, we'll be at uh, Blake's by 10 o'clock. You ought to be fair to these plays. What are these plays fair to me? I've never seen you walk out on a musical. Oh, that musical isn't opening tonight. No. Now, well, darling, you're going to have to learn the rules for the musical. There's always four changes of title, three postponements. They like it in New Haven, but it needs a lot of work. Oh, I was hoping it was a musical. <laughs> you have such a light mind. Not a bit. Musicals somehow have a humanizing effect on you. After a serious play, we joined the proletariat in the subway, and I listened to a lecture on the drama. After a musical, you bring me home in a taxi, and you make a few passes. <laughs> Darling, that is a very inaccurate piece of reporting. Oh, I will admit that after the Bearman play, you told me I had authentic beauty, and that's a hell of a thing to say to a girl. It wasn't until after our first musical you told me I had nice legs, and I have, too. <laughs> For a minister's daughter, you know a lot about life. Where did you learn it? In the choir loft. <laughs> I'll explain that sometime to you, darling. The close connection between eroticism and religion. Religion never gets as high as the choir loft. Which reminds me, I'd better tell Father, please, not to wait up for me tonight. I have never been able to rationalize it. What? My falling in love with a girl who lives in Brooklyn. Falling in love? Stooping to the articulate, are you? The only way I can regain my self-respect is to keep you in New York. Did you say keep? Oh, no, no. No, I've come to the conclusion you're holding out for the uh, legalities. Oh, I can afford to be a good girl for quite a few years yet. And I can't wait that long. Where could we be married in a hurry, say, tonight? Well, I'm afraid Father will insist on officiating. Oh, God. I bet your father could even make the marriage service sound pedestrian. Are you by any chance writing a review of it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, forgive me, then. Occupational disease. I may give that play tonight a good notice. <laughs> now, darling, don't pretend you love me that much. Be sure to tell your father not to wait up tonight. Tonight I'd better tell him to wait up. I'll telephone Winchell, tell him to publish the band. Nevertheless. Oh, all right. Everything formal, everything legal. <gasps> but not later than next month. <laughs> Father, and set the date. Oh, I'll have to see what's in rehearsal. There'll be a lot of other first nights in October. <laughs> Hello, Mortimer. How are you, Mr. President? Bully, thank you. Just bully. What news have you brought me? Justice, Mr. President. The country is sweating behind you. Yes, I know. Isn't it wonderful? Well, goodbye. 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 Where are you off to, Teddy? Panama! Panama's the cellar. He digs locks for the canal down there. <laughs> You're so sweet with him. And he's very fond of you. Well, Teddy was always my favorite brother. Favorite? Were there more of you? Yes. There's another brother, Jonathan. Oh, I never heard of him. Your aunt never mentioned him. Uh, we don't like to talk about Jonathan. He left Brooklyn very early by request. <laughs> Jonathan was the kind of boy that liked to cut worms in two. With his teeth. <laughs> what became of him? I don't know. He wanted to become a surgeon like Grandfather, but he wouldn't go to medical school first. <laughs> His practice got him into trouble. Aren't you two going to be made for the theater? No, we're skipping dinner. We won't have to start for half an hour. Oh, well, then I'll leave you two alone together again. Oh, no, Father, darling. I'm going to run over to speak to Father. Before I go out with you, he likes to pray over me a little. I'll be right back. I'll come to the cemetery. Well, if the prayer doesn't last too long, I'd have time to lead you beside distilled waffles. <laughs> oh, Mortimer, that's the first time I ever heard you quote the Bible. <laughs> Please do the name would be a good influence for you. Oh, by the way, I'm going to marry you. Oh, Elaine thought it was brilliant. What 
was, dear. Oh, my chapter on the road. Well, when he named us back, I think we should have a little celebration. We must drink to your happiness. Martha, isn't there some of that Lady Baltimore cake left? Oh, yeah. And I'll open a bottle of wine. Oh, and to think it happened in this room. Well, where can I afford that? Well, yeah, with your fiancé sitting beside you tonight, I do hope it's a play you can enjoy for one. It may be something romantic. What's the name of it? Murder will out. Oh, dear. Yeah. When the curtain goes off, the first thing you will see will be a dead body. Sanitarium, happy day. Oh, yes, dear, it's all arranged. Dr. Harper was here this afternoon, and there's the papers for Teddy to sign. Here they are. He's got to sign these right away. That's what Dr. Harper thinks, so there won't be any legal difficulties after we pass on. He's got to sign them this minute. He's done on the cellar. Get him up here right away. Oh, there's no such hurry as that. No, once Teddy starts working on the canal, you can't get his mind on anything else. He's got to go to Happy Dale now, tonight. Oh, no, dear, that's not. Gone. No, no, right away, I tell you, right oh, away. Now, how can you say that? Why, as long as we live, we'll never be separated from Teddy. Well, listen, darlings, I'm frankly sorry, but I have some shocking news for you. you know, we've all got to try and keep our heads about this. You know, we've always sort of humored Teddy because we thought he was harmless. Why, oh, he is harmless. Was harmless. Why he has to go to Happy Dale? Why he has to be confined? Oh, now why have you suddenly turned against Teddy, your own brother? Well, you've got to know some time. It might as well be now. Teddy has killed a man. Nonsense, dear. There is a body in the window seat. Yes, dear, we know. <laughs> you know? Of course, dear. But it has nothing to do with Teddy. Now just forget all about it. <laughs> forget you ever saw the gentleman. Oh, yes. We never dreamed you'd keep. <laughs> oh, who is he? Oh, his name is Hoskins. Adam Hoskins. That's really all I know about him, except that he's a Methodist. <laughs> That's all you know about him? Well, what's he doing here? What, what happened to him? He died. I thought the men don't just get into window seats and die. No, dear, he died first. <laughs> but how? Oh, Lord, but don't be so inquisitive. The gentleman died because he drank some wine with poison in it. <laughs> Why did the poison get in the wine? Well, we put it in wine because it's less noticeable. When it's in tea, it has a distinct odor. <laughs> Put it in the wine? Yes, and I put Mr. Hopkins in the window seat because Dr. Harper was coming. <laughs> then you know what you were doing. You didn't want Dr. Harper to see the body. Well, not a tea. <laughs>
Well, so what? It would take me about a half hour to get to Brooklyn? Yeah, well, what time you got? Oh, that's right. I must be here. <laughs> Tabby! Martha, come in here. What are we going to do? I mean, what are we going to do? What are we going to do about the lot, dear? There is a body in there! Mr. Hoskins! Oh, good heavens! I mean, I can't turn you over to the police, but what am I going to do? Well, for one thing, dear, stop being so excited. And for pity's sake, stop worrying. We told you to forget the whole well, thing. Yeah, my dear, and Gabby, can't I make you realize something has got to be done? What the way you behave yourself? Well, you're too old to be flying off the handle like this. Oh, Mr. Hotchkiss. Hotchkiss, dear. Well, whatever his name is, I mean, you just can't leave it there. He don't intend to, dear. No, Teddy's down in the cellar now, digging the lock. <laughs> Teddy, you know, you can have buried Mr. Hotchkiss in the cellar? Oh, yes, dear. That's what we did with the others. <laughs> Teddy, you know, you can have buried Mr. Hotchkiss in the when you say others, you, you mean others? More than one others? Oh, yes, dear. Let me see. This makes 11, doesn't it, Abby? No, dear, this makes 12. Oh, I think you're wrong, Abby. This is only 11. No, dear, because I remember distinctly when Mr. Hoskins came in, it occurred to me that he would just make an even dozen. We <laughs> really shouldn't count the first oh, one. Oh, I was counting the first one. So that makes 12. Hello? <laughs> oh, well, oh, 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 well, anyway, oh, they're all down in the cellar. Oh, <laughs> huh? No, 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 I'm as sober as a lark. Yeah, well, I, I called you because I was feeling a little pirandello. Yeah, pirandello. You wouldn't know, Al. Look, I'm glad you called. Get a hold of George. He's got to review the plane tonight. I can't make it. Al, you were wrong. I'll tell you all about it tomorrow. Well, George has got to cover that plate, and I guess it's my department. I'm running it. Now, you get a hold of George. Oh, no, wait a minute, uh, Where were we? Twelve? Yes, Abby thinks that we should count the first one. So, that makes twelve. Okay. <laughs> now, uh, who was the first one? Mr. Midgley. He was a Baptist. Of course, I still feel that we can't claim full credit for him because he just died. Martha means without any help from us. <laughs> you see, Mr. Mitchell came here looking for a room. It was right after we moved to New York. And it didn't seem right for that lovely room to be going to waste when there were so many people who needed it. He was such a lonely old man. All his kids and kin were dead, and it left him so forlorn and unhappy. We felt so sorry for him. And then, when his heart attack came, and he sat dead here in this chair, looking so peaceful, remember, Martha? Well, we <laughs> made up our minds then and there that if we could help other lonely old men to that same peace, we would. <laughs> he dropped dead right in that chair. Oh, how awful for you. Oh, no, dear. Why, it was rather like old times. Your grandfather always used to have a cadaver or two around the house. And you see, Teddy had been digging in Panama, and he thought Mr. Mitchell was a yellow fever victim. <laughs> and that meant he had to be buried immediately. So we all took him down to Panama and put him in the lock. Now, that's why we told you not to worry about it, dear, because we know exactly what's to be done. So that's how all this stuff got started, that, that man walking in here and dropping dead? Of course, we realized we couldn't depend on that happening again. <laughs> and you remember those jars of poison that have been up on the shelves in Grandfather's laboratory all these years? You know your Aunt Martha's knack for mixing things. You've eaten enough of her pickle lily. <laughs> well, dear, for a gallon of elderberry wine, I take one teaspoonful of arsenic and then add a half teaspoon of strychnine and then just a pinch of cyanide. You should have quite a kick. <laughs> oh, yes! As a matter of fact, one of our gentlemen found time to say, how delicious. <laughs> have to get things started in the kitchen. I wish you could stay to dinner. I'm trying out a new recipe. I couldn't eat a thing. <laughs> Wait for Elaine. <laughs> 
down here. <laughs> How happy you must be. <laughs> well, I'll leave you alone with your book. <laughs> somebody around the place. Al, what about the office boy? You know, the bright one, the one we don't like. Well, look around the office. I'll hold on. I'd really like to see the room. Well, upstairs. Won't you try a glass of our wine before we start up? Never touch it. We make this ourselves. It's an elderberry 
wine. Elderberry wine? Mm. I haven't tasted elderberry wine since I was a boy. Thank Look, you. there's got to be some printers around the place. Well, Al, what about the fellow that sets my coffee? He'll know about what I write. His name is Joe. He's the third machine from the lab. Come on, Al. It might turn out to be another Brooks Atkinson. Do you have your own elderberry bushes? No, but the cemetery is full of them. <laughs> No, I am not drinking, but I'm going to start right now. Do you serve me? Oh, we might, but first, just see if you like our wine. Mortimer! Ah, 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 ah. Ah, 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 ah. Mortimer, I can't! Ah! Oh, my God! Get out of here! into a very bad habit. Mortimer, we don't try to stop you from doing the things you like to do. I don't see why you should interfere with us. Hello. All right, I come with the first act and I'll pan the hell out of it. Now look, Al, you've got to do something for me. Get a hold of O'Brien. A lawyer, the head of our legal department, have him meet me at the theater. Now, don't let me down on this, Al, okay? Okay. I'm leaving right now. This money. I gotta go to the theater and I can't get out of it. But before I go, will you promise me something? <laughs> we would have to know what it was first. I love you very much. And I know that you love me. And you know that I would do anything in the world for you. And I want you to do just this one little thing for me. What do you want us to do? <laughs> don't do anything. I mean, don't do anything. Don't let anyone into this house, and you leave Mr. Uh, Hoskins right where he is. Why? Oh, I gotta have time to think. I've got quite a little to think about. You know that I wouldn't want anything to happen to you. What on earth could happen to us? Anyway, you'll do this for me, won't you? Well, we were planning on holding services before dinner. Services? Well, certainly. You don't think we would bury Mr. Hoskins without a full Methodist service, do you? Why, he was a Methodist. Well, can't that wait till I get back? Then you could join us. Yes, yes. Oh, Martha, you'll enjoy the service, especially the hymns. Remember how beautifully Mortimer used to sing in the choir before his voice changed. Now, remember, you're not going to let anyone into this house while I'm gone. It's a promise. Well, I, don't oh, see what... I, I think we can do that now that Mortimer is cooperating with us. Well, all right, Mortimer. Good. Do you have any paper? I'll be back just as quick as I can. There is a man that I have to see. Is some stationery for this too? It'll be fine. I can save time if I write my review on the way to the theater. <laughs> Oh, that's so nice. 
I such a fear. But are you sure that you want me to do it? It's only fair. I'll wear my black bombardine and mother's old brooch. How do you fear? Now, we promised told her we wouldn't let anybody in. I wonder who it is. Just a minute, and I'll look. It's two men. And I've never seen them before. Are you sure? <laughs> There's a car at the curb. They must have come in back. Let me go. Do you recognize them? They're strangers to me. <coughs> we just have to pretend we're not at home. This is the home of my youth. As a boy, I couldn't wait to escape from this place. Now I'm glad to escape back into it. Ah, Charlie, this is a fine hideout. Family must still live here. There's something so unmistakably Brewster about the Brewsters. I hope there's a padded path awaiting the return of the prodigal. Yeah, I'm hungry. Look, Johnny, drinks! As <laughs> though so we were expected. A good omen. Who are you? What are you doing here? Why, I'm Abby. I'm Martha. It's Jonathan. You get out of here! But I'm Jonathan. Your nephew, Jonathan. No, it's not. You're not anything like Jonathan. So don't you pretend you are. You just get out of here. But I am Jonathan. And this is Dr. Einstein. That's not Dr. Einstein either. Not Dr. <laughs> Albert Einstein, Dr. Ehrman Einstein. <laughs> you're not our nephew, Jonathan. Who are you? I see you're still wearing the lovely garnet ring that Grandma Brewster bought in England. And you, Aunt Martha, still the high collar to hide the scar where Grandfather's acid burned you. His voice is like Jonathan. Have you been in an accident? No. My face, Dr. Einstein's responsible for that. He's a plastic surgeon. He changes people's faces. But I've seen that face before. Oh, Abby, remember when we took the little Schultz boy to the movies and I was so frightened? It was that face! Easy, easy, no. easy, easy, Johnny, easy, easy. Don't worry, ladies. In the last five years, I give Johnny three new faces. I give him another one right away. This. Last face, well, I saw that picture too. <laughs> Just before I operated, I was intoxicated. Do you see what you done to me? Why, even my own easy, 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 You're home, in this lovely house. How often he tells me about Brooklyn, about his house, about his aunts that he loves so much. They know you, Johnny. You know it's Jonathan. Well, speak to him. Tell him so. Jonathan, it's been a long time. What have you been doing all these years? Yes, Jonathan, where have you been? Oh, England, South Africa, Australia. The last five years, Chicago. Dr. Einstein and I were in business there together. We were in Chicago at the World's Fair. Yes, we, we found Chicago awfully warm. Yeah, I got hot for us, too. <laughs> well, it's wonderful to be in Brooklyn again. You, Abby, Martha, you don't look a day older, just as I remembered you. Sweet, charming, the hospitable. <clears throat> and uh, dear Teddy, did he get into politics? Uh, my little brother doctor was determined to become president. Teddy's fine, just fine, and Mortimer is well, too. I know about Mortimer. I've seen his picture at the head of his column. He's evidently fulfilled all the promise of his early nasty nature. But we're very fond of Mortimer. Well, Jonathan, it's very nice to have seen you. Bless you, Aunt Martha. It's good to be home again. Martha, we mustn't let what's on the stove boil over. Yes, if you just excuse us for a minute, Jonathan, unless you're in a hurry to go somewhere.
Man, Johnny, where do we go from here? We got to think fast. The police! The police have got pictures of that face. I got to operate on you right away. We got to find some place for that. And a place for Mr. Spinalzo. Don't waste any worry on that rat. But Johnny, we got a hot stiff on our hands. Forget Mr. Spinalzo. But you can't leave a dead body in the rumble seat. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't have killed him, Johnny. He's a nice fellow. He gives us a lift, and what happened? He said I look like Boris Karloff. That's over, Doctor. You did that to me. See, Johnny, you see. I find a place somewhere I fix you up quick. Good night. Johnny! I got to eat first. I'm hungry. I'm weak. Jonathan, we're very glad that you remembered us and took the trouble to drop in to say hello. But you were never happy in this house. And we were never happy while you were in it. So we just came in to say goodbye. I'm happy. I can't say that your feeling toward me comes as a surprise. I spent a great many hours regretting the many heartaches I must have given you as a boy. Yes, you were quite a trial to us, Jonathan. But my great disappointment is for Dr. Einstein. You see, I promised him that no matter how rushed we were of passing through Brooklyn, I'd take the time to bring him here for one of Aunt Martha's home-cooked dinners. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm afraid there won't be enough. Well, that's a pretty good-sized pot roast. Pot roast! Thank you, Aunt Martha. We'll stay to dinner. Well, we'll hurry it along. Yes. Jonathan, if you like to freshen up, why don't you use the washroom in Grandfather's old laboratory? Is that still there? Yes, just as he left it. Well, I have Martha get things started, since we're all in a hurry. Well, we get a meal anyway. Grandfather's laboratory, just as he left. Doctor, a perfect operating room. Uh, too bad we can't use it. After you finish with me, you'll be the bigger corpse in here. The laboratory. That large ward in the attic. Ten beds, Doctor, and Brooklyn is crying for your talents. Try and work yourself up, Johnny. Anywhere from Brooklyn, I think we're here too late. Oh, you don't know this town, Doctor. Practically everybody in Brooklyn needs a new base. <laughs> but so many of the old faces are locked up. Oh, a very small percentage. And the boys of Brooklyn are famous for paying generously to stay out of jail. Take it easy, Johnny. Your aunts, they don't want us here. We're here for dinner, aren't we? Yeah, but after leave it to me, Doctor, I'll handle this. Why, this house could be our headquarters for years. Oh, that would be beautiful. This nice, quiet house. And those aunts of yours, sweet ladies. I love them already. I get the bags, yeah? Doctor, we must wait until we're invited. But you just say we invite it. And if they say no. Doctor, <laughs> two helpless old women. <laughs> it's like comes to a beautiful dream, eh? Only I hope you're not dreaming. <laughs> so peaceful here. That's what makes this house so perfect for us. It's so peaceful. interested in our experience in Indiana. Well, Jonathan, you've led a very interesting life, I'm sure, but we really never should have allowed you to talk so late. My meeting Dr. Einstein in London, I might say, changed the whole course of my life. You remember I've been in South Africa on the diamond business. 
than Amsterdam, the diamond market. Well, I wanted to get back to South Africa, and Dr. Einstein here made it possible for me. Yeah. That was a good job, Johnny. When we take off some bandages, his face looks so different, the nurse had to introduce me. <laughs> I love that face.